Hey, I'm Bob at I Like To Make Stuff. Today we're gonna finish renovating the master bathroom. In part one, we started with a bathroom from 1983 and basically just ripped everything out. We took out an old shower, a shower tub combo, and a toilet because we wanna change the layout of this room. Part of that means we also had to take out the drainage and the plumbing and then put new drainage and new plumbing back to fit the new locations of everything. So now we're at a place where we've got almost everything roughed into the walls. We've got a little bit of electrical to do before we can start covering everything up. Let's start there. I've got two boxes up here for the new lights above the vanity. And now I'm gonna finish up the lighting over here. This is where the fan used to be and we're adding some lights. So I took the wires out of the old box and moved them up to a new box. But before I can run the wires up to where the lights are gonna go, I have to make some holes in the ceiling. I'm gonna be cutting some holes in the drywall and luckily I do have access above in the attic but they're still not gonna be super easy to get to. I've used these things before for mounting stuff in the ceiling when you're doing a remodel, and these are awesome. You actually set these down in between the joist, make sure this is in the hole that you cut, and then you twist this bar, and as you twist it, they unscrew and spread into the joist. Then they lock in place with these teeth. In the past, we used these things to hang ceiling fans so they're nice and strong. We ended up being able to use a regular work box to put in the ceiling for both of those and now we got to put the recessed lighting above the shower. Now this is a remodel can that you put in when you want to add recessed lighting to an existing ceiling and we can wire all the three wires that are going to it right into these terminals so that should be really handy. Now when you do get lighting to go above a shower you have to make sure that it is wet rated. So just look at the different options and make sure you get the right one rated for your job. If you buy a fixture like this or metal electrical boxes, make sure you get some of these. These screw into the holes inside the box to clamp down the wires to make sure that they don't pull back through when you're done working. Got everything hooked up for the electrical and turn the power back on. Everything seems to be good to go. And so now we're gonna put in this recessed light. This is an LED insert that is rated for wet. So it's good to go above a shower. And this part actually just plugs in where the light bulb would typically go in the recessed can. And these are made to fit five or six inch openings. And they just have some little brackets that you can loosen to make the width of this whole thing a little bit smaller. In this box, I installed three switches. One is for the light in the shower, and the other two are for the fan, and that's because the fan that we got comes with a Bluetooth speaker. So when you're not using the fan functionality, you can turn it on and actually have some music inside your bathroom. So this fan has a USB, and it plugs right into the side of the speaker, and then the speaker plugs into the housing. I just hooked up the speaker and paired it really quickly. It worked super well. Responsibilities, what are you making? The anxious, the anxious, the, the anxiousness starts. <laughs> Anxiety starts. I have to make a. a mi All right, we finally got all the drywall up to replace all the old stuff that we took out. We've got the soffit completely filled in. We've got the area around the toilet filled in and some new pieces on the outside of the shower walls. So the next step is adding corner bead and then a whole lot of mudding and sanding. And actually, you may be wondering why there's no drywall where the shower is gonna be, and that's because we're not putting drywall there. We're gonna use a different type of board that's a waterproofing board specifically for showers. We'll get to that in just a little bit.
If you watched part one of the video, you saw me cut the hole for the drain in the shower, and now we're ready to actually put in the shower pan. This is a system from Schluter, and they make all the stuff that I'm gonna be using to waterproof this shower. This pan is made of foam, so you can easily cut it and fit it into the area that you wanna put it. And it also comes with this step. This is another foam block that you can set right in place, and this will stop water from being able to come out. And this stuff is called Curdy Board, also from Schluter. This is a waterproof panel that's gonna go on the inside of the shower, and that's how we're gonna waterproof the surround. They've got pieces like this for inserts that you can put in between the studs. And between this and the foam on the bottom, this is gonna be the waterproof layer that we can tile on top of. I'm gonna briefly go over the installation for all these different things, but if you wanna do this project yourself, you should go to the Schluter website and look at the videos for each one of the products. They've got detailed information in case you actually wanna do this yourself. Now the order that you install all of these different parts is really up to you, but part of thinking through where they're all gonna be is thinking through how the tile on the outside of them is gonna interact with the rest of the room. I'm gonna be doing a tile surround that comes around this corner, and so I wanna make sure that the outside of the step is in line with this wall. So by working from this outside point, I'm actually gonna have to put in a couple of spacers to make sure that everything will connect correctly. Of course, after you get it all installed, you're gonna go back and waterproof and cover all the seams anyway, so it's not a huge deal. These boards get attached to the studs with these specialized washers, but these need to go into the stud and in between two pieces so it can hold both pieces in place. These studs don't necessarily line up with the outside edge, but luckily you can cut this stuff with a knife. So we're just gonna cut it to fit and put in the next board. I've got this back wall put in and now it's time to lay down the shower pan and to do that we're going to lay down a bed of thin set in this area and then press the pan down into it. It's really important to make sure that this subfloor is nice and clean so I've swept that up and also last time I did tile I did not wear gloves and after a couple of days of doing tile and mortar and grout and everything my hands were completely dry. So a tip for you is to wear rubber gloves. Then after you get it laid in place, you gotta step on it again to actually press it down into the mortar. So after you get the shower pan in place, then you gotta put in the step to keep the water in. And it's the same process. You put down a layer of thin set and then press the step in. Now the kit comes with two pieces that are longer than the entire pan. And luckily you can just cut those down with a utility knife to make them fit. Like I mentioned before, I needed to pull the step out a little bit so it lines up with this outside wall. And to do that, I'm just creating a spacer out of the same curdy board from the wall, and I'm gonna fit it in between the step and the pan. I've just cut it to the same thickness as the outside of the pan. Now that we got the shower pan laid down and I've got a bunch of extra thin set, I'm gonna go ahead and use that to lay down the Dietra. Now we did a whole video about laying tile and in that we explained what this is for and why you wanna put it down. But basically it's an uncoupling membrane to make sure that when the subfloor expands and contracts, it doesn't crack the tile above. So we're gonna lay down some thin set and lay this stuff down.
This is the curdy board insert that's gonna go in the wall. It's a preformed insert, super easy to be able to have a place to put shampoo and all that. And I'm gonna mount this about right here, but I wanna make sure that it is sitting flush on top of the previous piece. So first, I'm gonna put the piece below it and then use it to rest the bottom surface on. For this bottom piece to sit in place around the step, I just need to notch out the corner. And this is super easy because it cuts with a knife. I'm gonna line it up with the outside edge, and make a little mark with the knife, then set it down in here, make another mark, and then just chop out that corner. We're finally at a point where we can start laying tile on the floor and I decided to do the floor first so that we can walk on it to do the tile and everything else in the bathroom. So I've got this marble, these hex for the floor out here, and then the same marble is going to be used on the inside of the shower, but it's a different shape. It's called a penny round. I started by dry laying these out along this outside edge of the shower so I can figure out where I need to cut so that there's a flat edge on the side but also how it interacts with the corner. And I found out that I actually have to pop off one of these so that it can wrap around the corner. I don't need to cut that one off. So now it's time to take these to the saw, start making cuts. So funny story, I came outside to turn on the tile saw and hook up the hose to it, but the hose is frozen solid. It's like 27 degrees right now. So instead, we're gonna use the pump. This actually came with this tile saw, which is pretty handy. You can drop this down into a bucket of water and that will feed water up into the saw. So it'll look like this, it'll be right up against that and then there'll be another piece of tile that comes down and meets it. And so now I just have to cut a whole bunch more pieces with that same line all the way down and then start laying the tile. If you want some more information on laying tile, we put a bits video out recently that covers all the process. So go check that out, we'll put a link to it. I went ahead and cut several pieces to work around the entire shower and especially around the toilet. There's a bunch of weird pieces that have to be cut to fit around the flange. So I went ahead and got all those pieces prepared so that I can start laying them and then just fill out the rest of the room. I've got the floor tile installed and before we can do any tile or anything else in the shower, we have to make sure that it's waterproof. And to do that, we're gonna use a test plug in the drain and then fill up the pan with water to see if there's gonna be any leaks. You wanna leave that water in there for about 24 hours. After you've poured the water into the pan, you need to make a mark right at the water line and then watch it for about 24 hours to make sure that that line doesn't drop. When you're doing a project like this, you have to think about the order of operations. I put down the tile on this floor, but I haven't grouted it yet because I needed to be able to get to the shower. And I had to do the water test in the shower before I could do anything else in the shower. So just keep in mind that you're gonna have multiple steps that need to happen in a certain order and be sure to plan ahead a couple of days to make sure that what you're doing now is not gonna stop work tomorrow or the next day. While we're waiting on the water test in the shower, it's time to start grouting this floor. I've got the grout mixed up, I've got water and sponges. We cover all this stuff in the bits video about tile, but we are gonna do something a little bit different this time. This time, instead of adding water to the grout, I got this grout maximizer. It's an additive that has a sealer in it. So hopefully by using this instead of water in the grout, we're gonna skip the step of sealing altogether. It's been about 24 hours since we put down the grout and did the water test. The water test is looking good. We've had no leaks whatsoever. So we're gonna drain that out and then dry out the shower to get it ready for tile. We also need to wipe off the haze on the floor tile. 
When you do grout, it leaves a really thin layer of grout over the entire surface, and you can wipe that off with a damp sponge. So the floor tile is pretty much finished. I got it completely wiped down. I could probably go back and wipe it down again, but I'll do that later on. But now I have to do a bunch of other stuff that could potentially damage or just dirty up the floor. I've got to paint the walls. I've got to put some drywall on the ceiling, a lot of that stuff. So we're going to cover the floor with some brown paper. This is a really good idea anytime you're working on new flooring to just cover it up while you're finishing construction just to keep it safe. Now that we've got the floor covered up, we're ready to do the work on the ceiling. We had to cut out a section and then repatch another section of drywall. And one of the big things that we have to fix here is adding the texture that's on the ceiling back to this small area. To do that, you use this special texturing brush. You put a little bit of drywall mud on there and then just press this up into the mud. And as you pull it away, it adds that texture. I'm not very good at this, so it'll take some doing, but I'm gonna test in this small spot before I move on to the big area over there. I'm just kind of playing around with this because I don't think this brush is the right one to match the texture, so I'm just trying to reshape it a little bit so that it doesn't leave as much detail as it's been doing. Before I finish the texture on the other part of the ceiling, I wanted to jump over and lay down the tile in the bottom of the shower. Now there's some stuff I gotta figure out here and I wanted to talk about it in case you happen to run into something similar. This is the tile that's going to go down in the floor of the shower. It's the same stuff that's on the floor, but it's in a different shape. This is called a penny round. So these tiles are circular, but the drain that needs to go in is a square. So I have to cut out a square in the middle of all these pieces, and I wanted to talk about how I'm going to figure that out. So this needs to go down into this space, and if you flip it over so you can see the edges, you see that it's going to knock out a lot of different tiles to different degrees. And so first, I wanted to figure out where the tile sheets need to go. And to get these into place, they actually have to go all the way up to this outside edge. So I actually have to start by cutting straight lines along the two pieces that go into the corner and then working from the corner. Once I get the layout done here, relative to the outside edge, I can lay this in place and trace it with a Sharpie so I know where to cut the tile. I laid out the tiles on this end around the drain and then along this back edge and then I picked up the sheets in reverse order and stacked them over here. So I can always grab the one on the top to lay it into place. Now I'm going to lay down a bed of mortar for these to go on and then mortar all the way around the drain. When you put in this curdy drain, you put a big glob right in the corner and you set it down into place and make sure that the top is level with the tile. After I got the tile on the floor of the shower, I went ahead and cut some pieces to put in this niche area. It's the same stuff. I just put in some mortar, put it on the wall, so that's good to go. Now I wanted to wrap the outside of this, and I was thinking about doing it in the tile that I'm going to use here, but I came up with a different idea. Instead of getting the regular tile, I decided to go get some marble from Lowe's, and these are actually door transitions. It's supposed to lay in a doorway, but it's a solid piece of cultured marble. And so I got these to cut down to fit in here as the border and as the shelf. So, so far I've got these pieces cut down with miters to fit in the different sections. Now I need to go back and cut them on the tile saw to make sure that they are the right depth. 
These pieces actually have a bevel on both sides because it's a transition, but I'm gonna have to get rid of that by cutting it down to make it fit. I'm laying these subway tiles, this is what's gonna go in the shower, laying that in place so I can figure out how far out the marble needs to come. I want it to come out a little bit past the tile level just to give it a reveal. And this is the last tile for the shower. And you might notice up here at the top, along where it meets the wall, that the gap is not exactly uniform all the way around. That's okay. Whereas all these other lines are gonna get darker gray grout, the line in between the top tile and the ceiling is gonna get a bead of white silicone caulk. So that will help hide the fact that the gap is not perfect. So last night we finally finished up setting all the tile in the room and I wanted to give you an idea about how much time that actually took. I added up all the different days that I had been working on the tile and basically it was six full long days to get the floor, the shower, the walls, all the way around to get all the tile in place. Now we've only put the grout in the floor so far and that only took a couple of hours and today we're gonna grout everything else. We got this light hung up, of course, with the power turned off, and now we're gonna put the two lights above the mirror and swap out the electrical sockets and the switches to update those as well. The last couple of days have just been installation. We got the toilet put in place and we have a whole bits video on this that talks about how to put it in. Check that out if you haven't seen it. Now also in the bathroom, we put in a bunch of other stuff. We got the shower doors installed. We got all the shower hardware installed. We got the bathtub installed and the drain and the water lines. Now all these things come with instructions with them and we just followed those instructions. So I didn't show you a lot of that process. Now we also painted the vanity, got that put into place and now we've got to put in the sinks. Before we put the sink in though, there's something I wanted to address and it's based on one of the comments from the previous video. Somebody mentioned that when you have a mirror stuck to a wall for a really long time, if it's resting on a surface, the mastic on the back can get kind of brittle. Now I took away the support when I removed this countertop and so it's possible that this thing could come loose. So before I put this back on, I wanna put a little piece of wood in between the mirror and the vanity just to support it from underneath. 
This is the same faucet that we put in during the bits video about installing a faucet. So we're gonna use that one and then put in a new sink as well. If you haven't seen the video on installing these, be sure to go check it out because it's a really simple project. We got all that trim painting done, we got the vanity installed, and the bathroom is pretty much done. But before I show it to you, I wanted to mention one thing. We had to get this door ordered before we had the finished dimensions of this opening, and that actually caused a problem. It turned out that our door was a half of an inch too wide, and so we had to order another door to get it in place. That's just a word of caution for you to make sure that you have your finished opening before you order a door like this. Once we got that thing fixed, the bathroom was done. The bathroom is completely finished and we're super happy with how it came out. Huge thanks to Lowe's for sponsoring this video and providing all the awesome stuff that you see in this bathroom. And huge thanks to you guys for leaving us some really helpful comments in the part one video. I'd love to know what you think about this bathroom. Please let us know it down in the comments. And if you haven't seen any of the other videos that we put out, be sure to check these out right here. We've got some other ones that you might like. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. But the drain that's need to go. Ah. Motion camera. This is my normal voice. Extremely happy with how it came out. Came out.